In this lesson, we'll return to the procedure that we wrote in Lesson 5 to convert hours and minutes to minutes. The user enters the number of hours and minutes in the text boxes, and when the button is clicked, the values are read from the text boxes, the calculation is performed, and the result is displayed in the list box. Let's try some input for the procedure. Suppose we enter 2 as the number of hours, and 95 as the number of minutes and click the button. The conversion is performed and we can see our output in the list box. It's a little unusual to enter 95 as the number of minutes but you'll notice that the procedure we wrote still performs the conversion and gives us the correct answer of 215 minutes. Now suppose instead that we want to restrict our procedure so that it only performs the conversion when the number of minutes entered in the minutes text box is less than 60. And in the case where the user does not enter a value less than 60, suppose that we want to display an error message in the list box and clear the contents of the minutes text box. Let's go back to the code for our procedure to see how we can do this. Here's the code for our, our original procedure. And you'll recall from lesson 5 that it reads the values from the hours and minutes text boxes, stores them in the variables hours and minutes respectively, performs the calculation and then displays the result in the list box. And it does this irrespective of the number of minutes entered in the txt minutes text box. Now what we want is that the calculation be done and the result displayed only when the number of minutes is less than 60. To deal with this situation we use a structure called an if block. So first let's write the code for the if block and then we'll examine it. The block begins if minutes less than 60 then Notice that the word end if is inserted automatically at the end of the block. Next, we'll put the code to do the calculation and display the output into the block. Now let's look in more detail at the structure of our if block. The block begins with the word if. This is then followed by a statement or a condition which will be checked by our program to see if it's true or false. In this case, the program will check if the value in the minutes variable is less than 60. This condition is followed by the word then. Next, we have some lines of code. And finally, the if block closes with the end if statement. So when Visual Basic executes the if statement, it checks the condition to see if it is true or false. As we said, in this case, it checks to see if the value in the variable minutes is less than 60. If that statement or condition is true, it will execute the lines of code immediately after the word then. And it will know that there are no more lines of code to be executed once it reaches the end if statement. Now let's run the program to see if it's working as we intended. And remember, according to the code we've written, the calculation should be done and the result displayed only when the number of minutes is less than 60. So let's check this and see. If we enter 2 for the number of hours, 45 for the number of minutes and click the button, we see that it converts to 165 minutes which is the correct answer. Next we'll try one where the number of minutes is greater than 60, 75 minutes for example. And if we click the button, we get no output in our list box. This shouldn't surprise us, as the code we have written has only told our procedure what to do in the case where the minutes is less than 60. We haven't told it what to do when the number of minutes is not less than 60. So the next step is to write some code to deal with this. Recall what we intend to do if the number of minutes is not less than 60. We want to display an error message and clear the contents of 
the minutes text box. Looking at the comments describing the two cases, we might summarize them as follows. If the number of minutes is less than 60, do the calculation and display the result. Otherwise, display an error message and clear the text box. In Visual Basic, we use the word else rather than the word otherwise. Again, we'll write the code first and then examine it. So we begin by writing else and then we write the lines of code that we want to execute in our second case. We'll need two lines of code, one to display our error message in the list box and the other to clear the contents of txt minutes. Let's look again at the structure of our if block. The lines of code between then and else will only be executed when the condition is true. And the lines of code between else and end if will be executed when the condition is false. So, for example, if the number of minutes entered is 95, then the condition will be false and the second block of code should be executed. Let's run the program and see if it works. We'll enter 2 hours and 95 minutes. And remember, if our program is working correctly, we should get our error message and the contents of the minutes text box should be cleared. Let's click the button and check. And there we go. Our error message is displayed and the text box has been cleared. Now we'll try the program with a number of minutes less than 60, just to be sure that it's still working. So we'll try 2 hours and 45 minutes. Click the button and again it's producing the correct output. Finally, let's put 60 in our minutes text box and check if our program behaves as we had intended. In this case, before we click on the button, let's try to picture what should happen. Our condition will be checked to see if the value in minutes is less than 60. And in this case it's actually 60, which means the condition is false. So if our procedure is working correctly, it should execute the else part of the if block and display the error message and clear the text box. We click the button and see what happens. And there we go. We're getting our error message and the minutes text box has been cleared as we intended. An if else end if structure, as we have in this example, is used in a situation where we have two sets of actions to be carried out. One set to be done when a partic particular condition is true and the other set to be done when the condition is false. So in any given situation, the condition will be either true or false, meaning that the program can only execute one of these sets of actions. In our next lesson, we look at how to use if statements to deal with situations where there are more than two sets of actions, but only one of which can be executed in a particular situation.